Hello and welcome back. This video includes the readings and the message for February 28th, 2021, the day of our annual meeting at the church. I'd like to begin today with the readings from Genesis. This includes short passages from Genesis 12, Genesis 15, and Genesis 17. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Genesis 15. God brought Abram outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And from Genesis 17, When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And then from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 33. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan! For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. May God bless this reading to our living and to our understanding. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And the first chapters of Genesis contain short stories. The story of the creation of the world and the universe the story of the creation of Adam and Eve, the temptation of Adam and Eve, and the fall from grace. The story of Cain and Abel with its foreshadowing of the way that relationships would work and not work, the hatred and murder between brothers. The story of Noah and the idea that there are promises from God that the ocean does not overflow because God has promised it in covenant. The descendants of Noah, tracing his family tree and the people in his family tree have the names of nations. It's a way of understanding the relatedness of all people. And the story of the Tower of Babel the idea that human beings will reach towards heaven, that human beings will try to compete with God, and that is why we are divided into different languages. That is why we are scattered throughout the earth. The book of Genesis starts with these short stories, and each story is only about a chapter, and they're sort of linked together, but they stand alone, and they're, they're not all one story. But then at the end of chapter 11, there is a section of genealogy which ends up with somebody by the name of Terah. And Terah took his family from the city of Ur in Babylonia, and he set off to go to Canaan, 
He only went part way. He had two sons. One was Abraham. He had two sons. One was Abram and the other was Haran. And they stopped in a place and they settled there and that became the town of Haran. And that's the end of chapter 11. And at the beginning of chapter 12, we meet Abram. And God says to Abram, go from the country where you are now. Continue the trip that your father, Terah, started. Go on to Canaan. It will be a promised land for you. I will make promises to you and your descendants. And the story continues for many chapters. And about the time it's coming to the close, it starts the story of Abraham's son, Isaac. And from there on, several more generations so that from chapter 12 to chapter 50 of Genesis, it is a family saga, which flows over into the next book of Exodus, which starts with the family of Abraham, the Jewish people, the Hebrews, in slavery in Egypt, and how Moses led them out. And that's a story that takes two or three books of the Bible and leads them into the promised land and they're established in another story that's a whole book of the Bible. And that leads into the stories of the kings and the very many prophets that worked in the time of the kings. But at Genesis 12, there is a shift with the beginning of the story of Abram. That's where the story of the covenant with the Jewish people begins. And when we meet Abram, when we first get to know him, he is 75 years old. He's 75 years old when the Lord says to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And he sets out and at the age of 100, he's promised children. He begins his family then. He lives to an age of 175. But this story starts when Abram is 75 years old. What are most people doing at the age of 75? Some are doing what they've always done. They carry on the work that they had before. Some have left that work and they move on to some other kind of job or some other kind of profession. Many have retired by that age and retirement can mean many, many things. It can, it can mean after many years of hard work of being able to sit down on your porch with a glass of wine and enjoy life for a while, to watch the world go by. It can mean to sit by the fire on a nice rocking chair, but it can mean so much more than that. For many people, retirement is a time when they are set free to do the things that are really on their hearts, the things they really want to do. It may be a creative activity. It may be a social activity. It might be a political activity. It may be investing themselves in their families. And it may be a search for spiritual growth, for new learning, a time to gain new skills. And the years go by into the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and people slow down. They become less able to do some of the things they did before. And even at that point, they're still discovering new interests. I remember in the last years of my mother and father's life discovering how adaptable they had to be as they moved from their homes and moved into new kinds of residential settings and found happiness and peace in those places as well. Their, their lives continued to be good. I'd like to invite you to take a moment, if you're still in your working years, to think about what you dream of to be your retirement. What would you like to do? And if you're in your retirement years, think about what you've actually chosen to do with that. What, what is your approach to retirement? And if you're in the later years, think about how you might again be at a point of retirement, of, of changing from one life to another, of perhaps letting go of some things, but discovering things as well. What is retirement for you? 
Now, I raise this because it's an important personal and spiritual question, but today is the annual meeting of the church, and I'd like to think about this a little bit in terms of our church. In a way, our church has had a long and very active life, and we've been working hard for many years, and in a way, we're at a point of retirement. And that could mean many things, just as retirement can mean many things. It would be really okay if we were to decide that we really did want to retire as a congregation, to let it go, to go home. It's hard to give a really good reason why we should ask so much of 70 and 80 and 90 year olds in order to hold this thing together. We could retire in the sense of concluding the ministry of the church and disbanding. We could retire simply in the sense of thinking about giving ourselves permission to do just what we want to do. We love to worship together. We love to love each other. We love to do some good in the world around us. What if we were to just settle down into a retirement as a gathered group of people and just love each other and praise God and invite anybody else who would like to come along to just love each other and praise God. We can do that. We could do that if we like. It might mean staying in this location. It might mean moving to another location. But it would be possible for us to retire. Or perhaps we're at a point of transition into something else. Maybe we're more in the position of someone who's reached retirement age and wants to continue doing what we're doing. And that is fine too. To continue doing the work, to try to pick up some of the things we've had to drop in the last year and begin them again, to hold on to the dreams and keep working on the things we have been doing. Or maybe we want to set aside a few of those dreams and make room for other things to happen, other things we care about, to look out into the world and see what our unique situation is in this world right now. We have people who have been locked into their houses for a year and want to come out and they want to do something in the world. There's been so much that's happened politically and socially in the world and people who want to work together. We could decide on a vision for ourselves and invite people to come into that and it would be something different than we had before but it would still be our church, it would still be Hillcrest. Or we could take some aspect of who we have been in the past and focus on it, to focus, to focus specifically, for instance, on spiritual growth, or to focus specifically on regathering families. There's so many things we could do. It'll be very hard for us to do any of these things if we don't agree on what we want to do. And it's fairly sure that Hillcrest will not be the same a year from now as it was a year ago. We've already changed. We are so much different now than we were then. And yet we are still the same faithful and loving community of people, people who celebrate and worship and serve. If we go back to the question I asked a moment ago about your own retirement, what would you hope your retirement would be? Or what has it been? Or now that you're into retirement, how you might you be in a transition now? What would you like to do now? Those questions for you personally may connect into your ideas, your hopes, your dreams, your prayers for what the church can be. Maybe we should be talking about those things. In the middle of the book of Mark, Jesus sets out for Jerusalem and he talks with his disciples and he tells them that the Son of Man, that's a way he uses of referring to himself, especially as that's reflected in the prophecies about the one who is to come. He begins to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days be raised again. They hear the trouble, they hear the rejection, they hear the word killed, they're not ready yet to hear those words after three days. 
rise again. And he said all of these things quite openly. And Peter challenges him. Peter rebukes him. Peter says, no, Jesus, let's not do it that way. And Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. As we meet today for our church council, we will be talking about human things. We'll be talking about what you want and what I want. We'll be talking about money and buildings and officers and the business of the church. We'll be talking about human things. We'll be talking about our own dreams and our own fears and our own tiredness and our own energy. But we shouldn't only talk about those things. We should also be thinking about the divine things. It's not just what we want. It's what we believe God wants. It's not just what we need. It's also about what God is asking of us. And it's not just about what we have to work with, but what God is waiting to give to us. God said to Abram, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. May we together continue to be a blessing for each other and for all around us and for all the world. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we thank you for moments of change. We thank you for endings and for new beginnings. Help us to see where we are. Help us to understand where you would have us go from here. Help us to understand your will for this church and what we may find as we trust in you and move forward in celebration and worship and service and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. May God bless you and keep you. And may you be a blessing to all who are around you. Be at peace in the name of God who provides, in the name of Jesus who shows us the way, in the name of the Holy Spirit that continues to work through us and to equip us with the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being with us.